In this video, I'm going to show you how to read and write CSV files with Python using Pandas. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm on my Mac and already have Pandas and Python installed. I'm going to assume you do too. And the CSV files that we're going to be working with are this one right here called world.csv, which has a whole bunch of countries from around the world with some information about their ISO codes, their International Olympic Committee codes, their FIFA codes, and the date that they joined the UN if they are part of the UN. So that's the first one. That's a CSV file. The second one is a TSV file or a tab separated value file. So instead of all this data being separated by commas, this data is separated by tabs, as you can see here. So we have uh, 50 states plus DC and Puerto Rico on the left here, and then the population of each one of those on the right. So let's first start off by learning how to read those CSVs in pandas. So I'm going to open up a Python shell by simply typing Python. And in here, we can import pandas as PD. OK, so let's make a data frame with the world.csv file. So to do that, we can do df equals pd.readcsv and then give it the name to that file. So it's called world.csv. Put that in quotes and because i am on my desktop i can reference that file directly so we'll do that that's going to read the data frame or read the csv into a data frame object and let's see what that looks like so it's going to print out an abbreviated version of that so it looks like we have 220 rows here's the first five rows and here's the last five rows and all the columns associated with that so that actually looks pretty good now a couple different ways that you can interact with this to preview the data you can use df.head just to look at the first few rows. That shows by default five. If you want more than that, you could do df head 10 to see the first 10 rows. And then there's also the equivalent df.tail to show the last five rows. And obviously, you can make that uh, show the last seven rows if you wanted to do that as well. Now, it's not really easy to print out an entire data frame, especially of this size onto the console, but the best that you can do is wrapping df.toString in a print statement, and that'll print out um, everything, all the columns, all the rows like this, but if you have a much bigger data frame, it might not work as well for you. Okay, so let's talk about the index of this data frame. So if we do df, well, let's look at the, the data frame again. This first column is the index, okay? it's just Starting at zero, the first row has a zero, one, two, three, et cetera, et cetera. If we just want to look at that by itself. We can access that with df.index. And that is of type range index starting at zero and stopping at 220 incrementing by one, which is exactly what we see here. Now, the problem with that is that if we want to access a specific row in the data frame, we have to do that via the index. So if we wanted to get, for example, the 97th row, we would do df.lock and then pass in 97. And what that's going to return is the row for Japan. But that's not really intuitive, in my opinion, right? There should be a better index. Why, why can't we do something like let's get the row for Japan by passing it the actual name of Japan. Well, that's because of how we read our CSV file. We didn't specify what our index was. So because we already read it, we can actually update the index with something called set index. So let's set our index to our name column instead of these arbitrary 0 through 219 values. So we can do that with df.setindex and pass it the column that we want to set as the index, which is name. So what that's going to do is actually set that index for us to the name column. It's going to remove it from over here, just shift it over to the index. But our actual data frame wasn't updated. So we can either do something like in place equals true, or we can just simply reassign it back to the DF variable like this. So now if we look at our data frame variable, we see that we have our countries on the left column, which are now our index, which we can confirm by doing df.index. And now we see all of those country names, which more importantly means that we can now access a single row with df.lock and then pass the name of that row. We'll try for Japan again. 
and we get those values back. Now going back to before when we read the CSV file, initially we did something like this. We can actually specify the index column by passing in the index underscore call argument and give it either the index of that column, which is in this case the first column, or you, what's a better option is to specify the name of the column. So in this case, it would be uh, the name, which is the first row, the header row uh, for that column. So let's try that and see how our data frame looks. And that's exactly what we wanted to do. Now, the one thing you might notice about this is these countries that don't have a UN date are getting this NAN value, this NAN value by default. You may or may not want that for your purposes. So let me show you how to read the data frame and replace those NAN values with something else. So there's two additional arguments that we have to add here. Um, the first one is NA values equal none. So instead of having an NAN here, we're just gonna uh, have a Python none type there. And the other argument we have to add is keep default underscore NA equal to false. So let's read the CSV with those options. And it looks like I screwed up. So it is NA values, not NA value equal none. So we'll try that again. And let's see what our data frame looks like. So before we had uh, all those NAN values down here, but now they are just showing up as Python type none. Let's look at our tab separated values file next, which let me remind you, that's this one right here with the 50 state names in District of Columbia and Puerto Rico and their population. So when we read that, we have to do something like df equals pandas.read CSV, give it the name to the file states.tsv. And this time, since we're not using commas as our separator, which is the default, we have to specify the separator with sep equals, and then we can tell it that the data is separated by a tab, which is uh, slash t in this case. So let's read that data frame, see what it looks like. And it looks pretty good. Uh, the only problem I can see here is that it's interpreting the first row as the header name, right? So this, the difference between these two files is world.csv actually has the first row uh, identifying what the columns are about but states.tsv does not. It just goes right into the data without explaining what it is. So we can modify our command when we read the CSV file to say header equals none because it doesn't have a header. Now, when we look at that data frame, we will see that the first row doesn't have uh, California there anymore, but it's just kind of assigning this in arbitrary this is the zeroth row, this is the first row. So there's a slightly better way that we can do that. So we know that this is a state name and this is a population. So let's make a list here where it says the first column is the state name and the second column is the population. Now, when we read that CSV file, we can say instead of header equals none, we can say names equal names. So that's gonna say, we're going to read that file with separator of type tab, and it's going to, instead of saying just arbitrary zeroth column, first column, it's going to name those columns state and population. So let's see if that actually does that. We'll look at our data frame, go up to the top, and indeed it does name those columns appropriately. I also want to show you how to write out CSVs in pandas, so let's do that next. Now, instead of just writing out the data that we read in, let's modify it a little bit. Let's sort out the data in the state's population uh, column by population. So let's do df.sort values by the population. And what that's gonna do, uh, I forgot an S, I'm doing that pretty frequently in this tutorial, uh, df.sort values population. And what that's gonna do is pretty much reverse the order, have the lowest population at the top and the highest population at the bottom. So let's assign that to a variable called sort it. And then let's write that data out to a CSV file. So that's really easy. We can do sort it dot two underscore CSV. And then the name of the file that we wanna call. So let's do sort it dot CSV, execute that. And as you can see, that does create a sorted.csv file on our desktop. Let's take a look at what that looks like. 
and it looks pretty good. Um, let's say that we don't want this index column here. We can specify when we write out that file that we don't want that index column. So we can do sort it dot to CSV and just say index equals false. Write that one out. We get a new CSV file and there we go. That looks really good. In the next video here, I'm gonna show you how to do more sophisticated filtering of your pandas data frame by column, by row, all that good stuff. So check that out and I'll see you over there.